Hey guys and welcome to a new video! I should stop doing these jazz hands, but I won't. <laughs> one of the questions you guys ask me very frequently is what kind of watercolors I prefer, which one is my favorite watercolor, what watercolors I would suggest for beginners, and today I thought, you know what? I want to be a YouTuber, let's make a video out of this. And now let's go over to my drawer and pick up my favorite watercolor of all time and then this video will be over. Okay, here we go with my favorite watercolors. This one should be really easy. Um, uh, no. Uh, um, let's swatch them out first. Okay guys, jokes aside, my watercolor collection fills this entire table there's the stuff there and here so yeah let's go through this with a bit of a system i guess i want to show you my watercolors first and then maybe i will sort out some of those because i don't use them anymore let's first just put some kind of system behind this and let's roll a time lapse Okay guys, here's the entire collection. It's not really as um, planned out and as tidied up as I liked it to be, but I want to show you what I got and then I want to show you what I like. <laughs> Is this a good idea? I don't know, I don't write scripts for my videos, okay, so I just roll the camera and talk and then some weird stuff happens, so yeah. Okay, so first off, here are all my liquid watercolors, the Ecoline ones I showed you the other day and my Kodorex colors. Here I have the Rico Design paints I've showed you in a video. This is all Schminke. Um, this is my Schminke Zorn palette with my super dried up uh, yellow ochre. <laughs> and this is my Schminke. This is actually the first professional watercolor um, set I ever got. My husband uh, back then he wasn't my he was my boyfriend not my husband got it for me for my birthday and it started kind of my watercolor career which was really cool my actual first set I don't have anymore which was from Lucas I don't know if you know the brand it's a yeah it's a German cheap art supply brand is it German I don't know actually okay um, here are my Daniel Smith colors uh, it's this is a really fastly growing collection and it will grow even faster I think when I'm in London is my fine tech uh, palette this is I think the Pharao palette is it called or something like this here's everything Zenelier we have this Zenelier travel set here and it looks like hell because yeah you can still smell it I spilled my tea <laughs> over this palette and now it smells like peppermint which is nice and I also got this set from Zenelier for traveling and actually when I think about it this is the same paint as in the other one so it might be a good idea to you know just keep one of them namely this one it might be a good idea I'm, I have to think about this all right here we have 108 um, Holbein colors Holbein is a Japanese brand even though the name doesn't suggest it it's um, yeah watercolors here I have my grays then i have one box with warm colors and one with cool colors this is everything winsor and newton i have this palette from they were on sale in my local art store and they had these full pans on sale of professional watercolor um winsor and newton palettes and or paints not palettes i use the word palettes too often in this video okay and i bought them and forgot about them and last year i've made this tiny watercolor set with it and this is also from Windsor Newton. This is when I first traveled to London. My husband, or back then my boyfriend, <laughs> um, he had to work and I was bored. So I bought this Windsor Newton palette, which is also the professional grade. But I didn't know back then because I had no idea about anything. <laughs> There's actually a water container in here, but I've uh, lost the lid for the water container, so I don't use it anymore. Um, and these are the paints. They are really old. They are, I don't know, 10 years old now? Pretty cool. Oh, wait, where did I put those away? Next up here, I have this course set I bought in Berlin in January. January? It's hard to pronounce it in German. <laughs> I bought this course set and this paint actually also fell into my tea, which is a hilarious story. I won't yeah, recite, but this is the travel 
palette slash starter set and it, I bought it for 100 euros which was way too expensive but I really wanted it and then I checked in the internet and there I would have got it, gotten it much cheaper. And this is my core um, high chroma set. Um, it's the high chroma set I got in October. I bought it like for my birthday for myself and um, yeah it's a nice set I love it very much I have to put this over here okay this is the Marie Chinese painting color or watercolor I've used this once and some of the tubes exploded like you can see here or here <laughs> and then I didn't use them anymore so might be a good idea to yeah you know maybe give them away I ever put them away here I have a set of random watercolors and um, I had them in another palette but they fit up here and yeah I got them in here. We made the palette together so there's a video down um, in the description if you want to see it or just check my channel if I forgot putting it in the description and there you can check out what colors there are but um, yeah it's mainly Winsor and Newton, Schminke and um, Mijello. And now this is a set I bought in Japan. It's the Kuretake paintings in this nifty little, I don't know, mini disc <laughs> holder. And this is my name on it because my husband, I don't know why, but he made this little sticker and put it here and I was just like, okay. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we fool around, play around. And this is my wonderful um, Kuretake set with white oil paint, which was my husband when we were fooling around with the Bob Ross tutorial, then he stained this with white oil paint. Thank you again if you're watching. And this is the um, 36 color set I also bought in Japan in 2017, I think. Which year is it? It's, it's 2019. I, in two years, two years ago we went to Japan, yeah. Okie dokie, these are all my paints. Let's put some more, you know, thought into this. I think I want to swatch out one of each with a bluish color and I won't use any doubles. So let, let me do this off camera and let's make a cool transition. Also my desk is super dirty, just ignore this, okay? I would I could use my whiteboard underneath, but then I might stay my whiteboard and blah, 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 okay. Okay guys, I laid out this um, swatching sheet. <laughs> I've written down the colors here I want to test and now I want to test the color opacity. Don't mind this, I was checking if the line was still wet or not. The mixing and blooming effect. Effects. I didn't use any particular um, order, just you know, colors that might, in my opinion, uh, go good together, like the uh, two liquid ones I got and uh, the Japanese ones and stuff like this. Also, for swatching, I'm using my favorite watercolor brush, which is this Bösner round brush in the size 12, but the size doesn't really matter at all, so. Yeah, uh, first thing I noticed is that the Ecoline paints seem to be thinner than the Colorex ones, but this doesn't say anything about the paints themselves. This is just some observation and the liquid paints are very staining, both of them. So there we go for the colors. We just swatched them the other day, so I don't have anything new to say here, I guess. But you know, next up I want to test the mixing. For this I'm using the blue here and I've picked a magenta. Trying this out now. How well they mix together, which is also something we just tested in the video the other day, so nothing new to see there. And last but not least, I want to test how where they are blooming when I just put down a flat wash and then just go in with some water droplets. There you go. This is the Ecoline one. Next up I have the Colorex paint. I also thought I would pick a blue, but apparently I didn't. Okay, whatever. There you go for the Colorex one. Very similar, but I think the Ecoline is a bit more vibrant but 
This might also be my imagination because I picked it. Oh, well, I think they are kind of the same. Again, for mixing. Water droplets everywhere because apparently I'm a bit shaky. There we go. Mixing them in. Since this is already a purple, there's not much variation in color, but still we can test this. There we go. And last, the blooming effect laying down a flat wash. So, so far between these two I don't really see a huge difference, which means that I might also use them together. This is something I should keep in mind. I, I usually don't like, you know, mixing several brands because they might get muddy since they have other pigment to binder ratios or something else is different there, but here I don't see much of a difference. Next up, testing Daniel Smith, laying down flat a nice wash of color. This is the Fatalo Blue color, testing the opacity here. Now I'm testing the mixing properties, even though we already did this also in a video, but yeah. It's still fun. I wish somebody would pay me for doing this all day because it's really funny. <laughs> Mixing them on paper because usually I... I uh, sometimes I pre-mix but most of the time I'm just mixing on paper because I'm lazy. <laughs> and now again a flat wash. I already notice a huge difference in the um, properties between the liquid ones and the one in the pan. I guess that's also to be expected. Whoopsie, that was a bit much water. There we go for this. Next up is Schminker. Need to find a nice blue color that kind of looks like a cobalt blue. Maybe this? Yeah, this is kind of similar. There we go. It's, like mentioned, not exactly the same color because the set is so old. I had no idea about colors, about color mixing and swatching and whatnot. I just used it. There we go. Schminker is a paint brand that is much, I don't know, darker maybe or the I think the colors are less saturated for my personal opinion so yeah maybe that's a German thing because you know gloomy German paint <laughs> but I already always noticed that my paint isn't as bright as with other brands like especially when I only got the Schminke one and the Colorex one there's a huge difference between those in you know the vibrancy of the colors. Also the sun makes it really hard to have a consistent light source. I have my soft boxes out here but you know, you know. Next I have my Holbein colors in here. Also these came also in tubes and I squeezed them into these uh, half pans and I want to test them against my Kuretake paints. Get a nice cobalty bluish color. I think I will go for this one. There we go. I also noticed that the Holbein colors have a lot of white to them. Maybe not this one, but some of them are really opaque when it comes to watercolors, which is interesting. And they are really, really, really bright. Like, guys, look at this color. Oh, well. <laughs> Once again, look at this color. It's so vibrant and so bright compared to the um, Schminke paint. You might not see this well because I didn't pick up too much color on the paint brush, which is also something I noticed. I have to really activate them before painting. But look at this. This matches my liquid colors more than my solid colors or the ones I pushed into tubes, so this is really cool, if you're into this. And now for the um, blooming effect, there you go. For the Kurataka, I'm using the small paint set because I need a bit more space. The Kurataka paint is also, um, sometimes it's really semi-opaque. Not this one again. I'm really bad at picking a good <laughs> color to compare them to, but um, sometimes they are very, very opaque and sometimes I have the problem that they are so vibrant that, I don't know, my eyes <laughs> fall out when I try to use them. But, but this tiny set here, not so much actually, but I like this reddish purple I've created. Now some of the Kurotake paints are super vibrant and some of them, like this one, you need to really, really, you know, lay down multiple washes if you want to get the color like you imagine it but on the other hand it's also a really nice um, soft color chart. I, I really like this set for landscapes because of the subtle um, differences between the paints. Next up I have a single 
contestant because I think this is not really matching with any of those high quality brands. But I still want to give it a fair shot. <laughs> this is my um, Rico Design paint. I don't have a blue here, but I will use this purple, which I really like. I said a whole lot of the Rico Design paint. And I gotta say, it's it's not my favorite watercolor, and so this shouldn't be in this video. But, you know, testing 10 different paints is cooler than testing 9 different paints, <laughs> I guess. And also, I'm not testing them for the first time, so I can tell you a bit about my experience with the colors. For the Rico Design one, they also have a lot of white and a lot of binder in them, meaning that um, they are not super high pigmented, not super pure pigmented. I have no idea about the pigment information, oopsie, about the pigment information I told you the other day. So this one is standing out a bit, and now I'm testing my Core Winsor Newton and Zenelier paints, um, because I think well, the core one I could compare it more to Holbein, I guess, from the vibrancy of the colors, but I kind of thought of it more in this section with the Zenelier. Even though Zenelier is a bit more like the Kurotake one when it comes to transparency and colors, but, well, I could, you know, cut them up and then <laughs> rearrange them. <laughs> As mentioned, from core I have this high chroma set. And there's still some paint left in here. There you go. And when they say high chroma, they mean high chroma. This is so vibrant, it's it's amazing. But also, you might already see this, there's a bit more white in the paints. It's not super opaque, which is okay, which is what I, you know, <laughs> I got what I bought. I got what I ordered. I, I, I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> I've seen uh, other videos about this set before I bought it. Why well, not this set, but another set of those. Am I, am I confused? Maybe, maybe I'm a bit confused. Also, like mentioned, when they say high chroma, they mean, they mean high chroma. I could use a bit more of the turquoise or cobalt teal color, which I love. I love cobalt teal, it's so beautiful. Mixing a, in my opinion, super nice purple. Now for the blooming effect, which by, when I look at the Rico Design one is like non-existent, okay. Maybe I should, some more paint. Uh, water on the paint here because it seems to be disappearing. <laughs> also you can see since this is a um, cobalt color it's granulating and I love the granulation. This is also, uh, I'm a sucker for granulation. <laughs> Next up I'm using the Winsor & Newton and Zenelier paint. For Winsor & Newton I'm using this uh, Fatalo turquoise color which is a super nice vibrant blue. Look at this, it's amazing. It's so, so beautiful. Testing it again with mixing. If you're using this with the cadmium yellow I got on this um, palette, you get the most beautiful green ever. Why does it feel so soapy? I don't know, it feels super weird. I think this is the Penier. Oh, what's the color called? I forgot. Oh, this is the cobalt violet. Okay, um, with the cobalt violet you get this beautiful blue color, which is very nice. Also, once again, Winsor Newton is a super vibrant color brand. Very beautiful. Uh, they have a lovely granulation. And now the last one is Zenelier. From Zenelier I only got the Academy set or the student set. I don't know. In Germany the Schminke one is also always the... Well, they have student and Academy. This is, I think, the student set. It's La Petit Aquarelle, and there you go, these are the colors. Going for the color over here. Zenelier has very, very soft and gentle... Is gentle the right word? I, I don't think so. But the pigments are very... or the, the paints are very, you know, light and soft, and they are really great for any kind of floral and landscapes because Zenelier has a lot of reds. Like you can see here, there are a lot of warm colors, warm reds and warm greens and warm browns. And this is perfect for um, floral painters. So yeah, I think this is their trademark with these watercolors. Look at this purple, it's so beautiful, oh, wow. <laughs> and, um, but you can't really get dark and vibrant washes with the paints. Not like, um, you know, Holbein would be 
a really um, high contrast to this energy paint. But you can get super soft colors easily. Like, you know, you don't have to water them that much. Okie dokie. Let's, um, you know, let this dry and then think I will have to decide and maybe I will declutter my watercolors in the process. <laughs> well, who knows? Okay, guys, I forgot one brand in <laughs> the Imagello paint. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am confused sometimes. I'm not sure which one of this is Magello. I think this is Magello, I know. This is not. This is Magello. Yeah, this is not. This, yes. Um, Didn't I write this down? So I wrote it on the bottom of... Well, I'm just using this word Tyler Blue where I know it's Magello paint. Okay. I've heard mixed things about this brand so far. My personal experience wasn't that bad, actually. But I also noticed that they are somewhat similar to maybe a student grade watercolor or a cheapish watercolor. I, I like them. I especially like their... Oh, why did I use a flat wash of water here? I don't know. Let me go for this this red. also noticed that reactivating them is easy enough. So far I had no issues with them, but I didn't use them as often as maybe I should. And now we are going to let this dry and then we are going to have a final conclusion and whatnot. Okay guys, let's wrap this up. So um, before starting the camera, I just stared at this piece for, I don't know, three minutes to get an idea of what I wanted to say because it's, it's actually really hard for me to define my favorite watercolor, but I want to say something about each brand and each color um, in itself and so you might get an idea what kind of paints you might prefer or what kind of paints are good for the kind of painting you want to achieve or the painting style you want to achieve. To be honest you don't have to use this many watercolors. I'm actually overwhelmed about how many I have and I'm, I'm actually shocked that I have so much stuff. So let's start with the Ecoline paints. These are my newest addition to my watercolor uh, collection and they are very vibrant. They are liquid colors, which means that you don't have to reactivate them with water, but you have to think, I think, use a bit of water to dilute them because they might be too strong on the paper. I talked about this a lot in the Ecoline video. They are super vibrant. I like them a lot. I like um, transparency. I really like the blooming and the bright colors. So if you are maybe a comic artist, manga artist, and you like super bright paintings and poppy colors, not poppy like the plant, but like, you know, popping all of the page, this might be the brand for you. On the downside, you can't really take them with you unless you have these small containers but they might leak and might create a mess in your bag and yeah this would be a down for me but you could maybe just pick these three primaries and go with them and then have something to mix them in i don't know it's it's not really handy to pick them up as you go but if you are you know, stationary on a desk, then these might be the paints for you. The same actually applies to the Colorex colors. They are really vibrant. I remember that to mix a skin color, you have to use one droplet of a paint and I think 40 or 50 droplets of water. <laughs> so this is super bright colors again. Also, I noticed with these and with those you can't really lift them up the paper once you started painting so for these and uh, those you have to keep in mind what you're doing while you're painting and if you're someone who you know covers up mistakes which is nothing you don't know <laughs> i don't shame you i can totally understand but if you are someone who's maybe insecure about painting with watercolors and wants to lift up paint again you might you might shy away from those because once they are on the paper they are on the paper but um, once again for these i don't know if this is because i got these in the starter set but i also got those ones not in the starter set they don't have this pipette 
the small ones which is not really handy because you have to use an extra pipette and as you see here since the color is super staining the pipette also gets stained and you have to use a lot of water to clean it up again so this is kind of a it's kind of the reason why i don't use them as often next up we have the daniel smith colors i got this starter set primatech set and some single tubes daniel smith is a professional watercolor brand which means they are super pricey but you get what you pay for which means they are a great quality paint they have a great pigment to uh, binder ratio they don't use any artificial binders to stretch the colors you, you get pure pigments um, some of the paints are even single pigments so this is great you can see here that they are super transparent laying them down is very satisfying they have a nice granulation and also they have a nice saturation to the colors which is something i really like in my watercolors and also they are not super vibrant but they are not super dull <laughs> i can't really explain but from my experience layering them is is wonderful you can layer and layer and layer and uh, depending on the paper you use of course but you can layer them a lot and they don't really uh, mud up on the paper and uh, also uh, mixing with them is really really satisfying and painting of course with them is also very satisfying um, if you have the starter set they are liquid paints you can just pick up the starter set if you want to try them i think this is 30 euros so this is quite pricey i bought it for 30 euros here in germany with amazon prime and then you can just pick them up in a tiny pellet or any kind of tiny container using some water or even water brushes. I don't use them, but some people do. And yeah, <laughs> you do you. And um, yeah, you can just pick them up as you go and squeeze them on maybe an extra sheet of paper and start painting with them. So these are nice for traveling and also nice for stationary painting if you want to put them in a pellet. I'll put this back again later. What I noticed here is the granulation is super nice and you know I really love granulation so this is nice. There are similarities between Schminke and Daniel Smith when it comes to color but still the Daniel Smith one pops a bit more in my eye. I don't can you see it in the camera i don't know but it's it's the sun is coming out again so the weather today is not really filming weather it's super nice paint but it's also really pricey and if you're starting out with watercolor maybe you want to consider not buying the cheapest one but not buying the most expensive one you know speaking of expensive one here in germany schminke is also expensive but not as expensive as it is in foreign countries i guess it's it's the same with daniel smith to us it's super expensive and in the usa it's cheaper it's just the way it is so schminke is the paint i have the most experience with as mentioned i had the set for ages now um the colors are not as vibrant as with like daniel smith or even these ones but they are really nice desaturated and earthy and if you're looking for this if you want to draw something that's a bit more realistic or naturalistic then these might be the paints for you because they are really high pigmented again they are pure pigments and binder not artificial artificially modified in any way they are super nice they are also transparent the granulation is very nice this is not granulating but if you're using a granulating color then the granulation is super nice this looks a bit muddy but i think it's the way i mix it actually some colors are better with mixing together and some are worse but you can mix really nice colors with the um schminke sets believe me <laughs> also lifting them up from the palette was easy enough even though they are super old again they are super pricey and then maybe you don't want to invest in a big set of colors but if you want to learn how to do watercolors and you want to treat yourself to the best you can get maybe you can get a starter set with just 10 or 12 colors or even be bold get a starter set with just uh, three uh, primaries and learn color mixing it's it's a very rewarding skill to learn color mixing it's it's really hard but it's very rewarding and let me tell you guys i learned it last year <laughs> and i had some idea about color mixing but i really dived into it last year and believe me you can do it too when i can do it you can do it too all right next up is the holbein paint it's a japanese brand as mentioned it's also considered a professional brand holbein has special qualities about their paint 
They are also high pigmented but they use more of an opaque binder and maybe a bit more white to them which means that sometimes they are not super transparent but you get a bit more opacity to them. Holbein has a wide variety of paints but usually they are really bright and really light. They are not like Schminke, they are not really earthy. They Sometimes they even feel a bit more fluorescent. Fluorescent is this the English word, I think? And they really pop from the paper. So if this is again something you're looking for, maybe as a comic artist, then maybe this would be the paint for you. They kind of remind me of the Ecoline paints, even though the Ecoline ones and Colorex ones are even more brighter, but you know, they get in the same direction. Once again, Holbein is very expensive in Germany. I don't know if there even is a shop where you can buy them in Germany. So I bought these on Amazon, but they are super vibrant and you don't get these super desaturated colors like with, or you can get them, but you know, you can't really get it super earthy in my personal opinion, but I didn't use them as often as I should when I look at the price, but okay. Next up we have the Kuretake paints. I've used my small collection, but it stands for the big collection I have. With the Kuretake paints, I always feel like it's really hard to reactivate them and to get actually some paint on my brush. Even if I spray them before and let the colors, uh, you know, let the water soak into the colors, I have the feeling that reactivating them is really just really hard. I, I can't really explain it, but I feel like it's hard to load the brush with colors. So this is something you have to keep in mind. Also, I'm really unhappy with the color mixing here, but this might be due to my color choices, but who knows? So this, this does not really make me happy. The regulation here I like a lot, but this if you are new to watercolors and you want to test out a new brand, I wouldn't recommend them to you. I know that many manga artists are using them and they are nice and they are fine, but compared to maybe Schminke or Daniel Smith, I wouldn't... They are not in the same price range, of course, but you know, I don't know if I would recommend them to you. They are fine and they are nice and I like them, but they also have uh, this weird not weird, but this binder, they are not super transparent, they are a bit of opaque. The process of painting is not as enjoyable with those than with, let's say, Holbein or Schminke. It's, it's a bit harder to reactivate them, as mentioned. So you can get nice flat washes, you can, nice, you can get nice colors with them. Mixing... I realized that mixing them... I did some mixing on this small palette, but it never was really super easy, you know what I mean? Um, also on the small palette I have no idea if this is the purple and this the black and this the blue, I, I don't know. But with the big set it's really cool that you get a um, swatching sheet in the um, back of the set. So this is nice, so you can check out the colors there. Next up we have Rico Design. I talked a lot about Rico Design in the other videos, so I will keep this one short. It's a cheap watercolor brand. It doesn't have any pigment information, binder information or anything. Would I re recommend them? Actually, no. I'm thinking about selling them. I like them. They are nice, but they are not like you know, blowing my mind nice. It's this line, by the way, if you can't uh, see it. They are, you can, it's a cheap watercolor brand. There is a lot of white uh, and they have a chalky feeling to it. So these are not super high quality paints, but they are cheap. They are not, you know, amazing, but they are a good paint. Not as good as others, but if you are just starting out and I know that the small set costs just 30 euros then maybe this is the one for you but i i actually i wouldn't recommend them for beginners because you might get a wrong feeling about watercolors if you know what i mean if you want to test out watercolors with a cheaper set or with you know less a bit of a less budget the sentence is just going nowhere okay if you don't have a big budget and you want to test out watercolors then maybe buy a smaller set of a good brand and I don't know. <laughs> I heard they are good for lettering though. That's what I have to say about them. I tested them thoroughly over the last weeks and I wasn't really... The color uh, colors went muddy very soon. You can't really mix them very good. So I I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure about those. I don't want to say anything bad because then people would be like, but why did you buy them and whatnot? But you know, I don't have 
really so much good to say about them. Continuing on with the corset. I really like this corset a lot. I've mentioned it a lot in my videos. Did I mention it a lot in my videos? I don't know actually, but I'm talking about this a lot. They are super high pigmented. Again, they are using, I have told you before, they are using their own binder, which is called Aquasol. And this one is also not super opaque. It has, uh, super transparent, sorry. It has some opacity to it and it also feels a bit more chalky. I don't know, but that's not, It's once it's dry, it's not staining at all. Also, reactivating these ones is super hard. Once they are on the paper, they are there. You can't really lift them or reactivate them at all in my personal experience. I actually really like this because it means I can layer paints and use multiple washes which is something, as mentioned, I really like. Oh, I didn't really talk about this over here. Maybe it's because something that didn't really stand out to me. I like the granulation, I like the pigments. The binder is their own formula, as mentioned, but it's cool. <laughs> it's, it's cool. <laughs> I would recommend this. Maybe not um, getting this set, but the uh, starter set of those, and don't buy the tiny set for 100 euros, like I did. <laughs> Next up, I have the... Windsor and Newton paints. This is, as mentioned, the professional quality, but I have seen the Cotman paints before. Several of my friends have the Cotman set, and we did some experiments, I'm sorry, experiments uh, before with the Cotman and the professional, and there wasn't really too much of a difference. There's a bit of difference, of course, in the binder and the vibrancy, but similar, let's just say this. So Cotman, by the way, is their cheaper student brand, if you didn't know. Again, Winsor & Newton reminds me a lot of uh, the Daniel Smith or Schminke. That's because it's also a professional quality paint. I, I really love the vibrancy. Winsor & Newton, in my uh, experience, is a lot more vibrant than even Daniel Smith in my personal experience, because I have other, I mean, I have a cadmium um, and cobalt paint from Z Newton, which means that naturally they are really popping. I like the granulation, I like painting with them, reactivating them is easy, and as mentioned, this is the professional one, but if you would go and buy the Cotman one, I'm pretty sure it would be similar. This blooming didn't really work, but it, it looks cool. <laughs> I like this one and this one the best, actually just the blooming effects. Windsor Newton, again, nothing too special to say. They are vibrant colors, so if this is something you're looking for, if you want your colors to pop, then go for those. Now, Zenelier, which is this one, as mentioned, is um, a very soft color mixing, color, color mixing, color. <laughs> the colors are very soft and very light on the paper. They are not super vibrant. As mentioned, they are great for floral painters or if you're just looking for some soft paint washes. <laughs> they are not like your uh, Holbein's or Ecoline paints. They are really nice. They are easy to reactivate. I only have the student grade. I think it's student grade. And I only have the pants. I know the tubes are a different color, but I don't have the tubes. So this is all I can say about the a pen set. Same with them is easy, they're easy to reactivate and sometimes it's a bit harder as mentioned to get a darker color down because they are so light. <laughs> I, I should have looked up some more you know <laughs> adjectives for this video maybe. Last up I have, I didn't show the other paints, oh no, <laughs> okay who cares. Um, I have the Magello paints, I used this Vertida blue and this Rubine color to test them. So first of all, they are cheap for the tube size. I bought one tube, I think, for four euros. Also, they are non-toxic, which is nice. The paints are a bit opaque, so they are not super transparent. I have painted a bit with them, and actually I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. For my personal opinion, even though they say they are artist quality paints, I don't know, are they? <laughs> I actually only have some uh, paints of those. I, I should use them some more, but I, I enjoyed painting with them. Uh, they, they are good paints. They are fun and I, I like the variety of colors you can get and I mean I heard some good things about some bad things about them But if you like them and if you enjoy them, then just go with it. Okay, so <laughs> I'm using some art supplies that people hate and I still like them So do whatever do whatever you like. I'd say they are nice paints and since they're non-toxic, this is interesting. This is something I should look up more in the future. I'm trying to get everything non-toxic, but 
yeah you know sometimes you get your cadmium colors and yeah but this is another thing overall i like the blooming effect here i love the granulation but if you don't like granulation then don't buy granulating colors <laughs> also everything with cobalt in it will granulate and just check everything beforehand before you're buying something you might not like with the good paints you can check it on the website or on youtube anywhere then you get an idea about how the colors will perform so overall when i'm looking at this it's it's if I really should, you know, sort out something, declutter something in my life that I really don't need, then I would go for the Kuretake and Rico design ones because, I don't know, I'm, use, I'm not really using them a lot. The Kuretake one is huge on the desk and, and I always forgot I have it. Yeah, this is my personal, personal opinion. I... I did I make a good video out of this? I mean, it's not really that I could point on and say this is my p favorite paint because when I want to paint something florally, I know that Zenelier is good for this. Or if I want to paint something, you know, maybe misty with a lot of desaturated colors. But if I want to paint something that's really popping, then I know I can use these ones or the Holbein paints. And so, and sometimes I just go with my guts and pick the colors that my subconsciousness wants to pick, if you know what I mean. So it's, it's really hard to define one favorite brand. But actually guys, don't buy as many uh, watercolors as I did because this is getting out of hand. <laughs> if you have any more questions then just let me know. I don't really know how I should wrap this video up because I'm looking at this and I could look at this now for, I don't know, one hour and then I still couldn't really pin down one color and say this is my favorite one. But now I have swatched them out for you and for myself and maybe you've learned something. If you did, then like this video and subscribe. I know it's stupid to say, but you know, this is how it is with YouTube. And um, yeah, let me know if you want to see a similar video, maybe with gouache paints. Because I also accumulated a lot of gouache paint in the last when did I start painting with gouache? Two years ago? I don't know. Okay, if you have any more questions about watercolors or if you have any questions before buying, feel free to ask. I might take a bit of time to answer, but feel free to ask me if you are unsure which one you should get or if it's any good or if I know anything about it, then let me know because I watch a lot of YouTube, okay? <laughs> Not only that, but I also try to inform myself a lot about any kind of new paints and anything. All right, so next video will be up on Sunday for a new sketchbook Sunday and have a nice day and I will speak to you again in the future. Bye-bye. <laughs>